welcome to the Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 5 uh, for July the 1st, 2018. Uh, we begin a new unit today, Unit 2, entitled Jesus Calls for Justice and Mercy. And our topic taken from the Adult Quarterly is to forgive and be forgiven. Our devotional reading comes out of the book of Colossians chapter 3 uh, verses 12 through 17. Our background scripture is taken from the gospel according to Matthew uh, chapter 18 verses 21 through 35 and that is our print passage today uh, where our discussion will take place uh, from the gospel according to Matthew chapter 18 verses 21 through uh, 35. Our key verse reads, Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? That's taken from Matthew um, chapter 18 uh, verse 33 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to contrast the type of answer Peter expected in his asking the question about forgiveness with the type of answer that Jesus gave him. Secondly, to aspire to forgive as Jesus said to forgive. And then thirdly, to exhibit a forgiving spirit that realizes how much God has forgiven you. And we have three outlines that uh, will be a part of our lesson today. The first outline is entitled, How Many Times Should I Forgive? Our second outline is entitled, what heaven is like and then our third outline uh, is entitled the wicked servant I certainly thank and praise God for uh, yet another opportunity to uh, share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ and uh, we certainly know that God has has forgiven us and we want to really um, uh, dig a little deeper in this parable today uh, and prayerfully we'll be able to get some understanding of God's expectations uh, for his children and so we hope that you will grab your Bible and uh, some note paper and pen and uh, we want to just study today and uh, see what we can learn but I want to read uh, a little bit of the biblical context that is offered in our quarterly and then just a few um, uh, words from our lesson standard but the biblical context is as follows what does the Bible say about forgiveness uh, one of the earliest examples of forgiveness in the Bible is that of Esau forgiving Jacob and that's in uh, Genesis chapter 33 but uh, forgiveness is a is a decision of the will uh, and since God commands us to forgive, we must make a conscious choice to obey God and forgive. It is clear that God requires disciples uh, to forgive. And then from the lesson standard, um, this, the parable that we will be reading today of the unforgiving servant, uh, which the Gospel of Matthew alone records, uh, was spoken during the third year of Jesus earthly ministry so by that time he had become uh, much more direct in speaking to his disciples of his coming death and resurrection I want you to look at Matthew chapter 16 verse 21 uh, Matthew chapter 17 verses 12 verse 22 and verse uh, 23 so we want to get into uh, these outlines uh, but there was something that I wanted to uh, just lift uh, about this word forgiveness uh, because it's twofold uh, according to our study but it's an act of God's grace to for, to forget forever and not hold people of faith accountable for sins they uh, they confess uh, secondly to a lesser degree the gracious human act of not holding wrong acts against a person so we have 
uh, sort of two dimensions of forgiveness if you will one being divine and then the second uh, uh, dimension being human and then I want you to just make note of what a transgression is uh, it, it paints a picture or an image of sin uh, as overstepping uh, the limits of God's law and we'll come back and talk about that uh, transgression uh, because it's something that uh, all of us uh, should be familiar with uh, as the Bible speaks about uh, transgressions but uh, and then we want to make sure that we understand for the last few weeks we have been talking about parables and so uh, why did Jesus have to teach in parables um, and who was his audience uh, the gospel of Matthew particularly in the 13th chapter uh, paints an excellent picture uh, and certainly gives us some answers as to why Jesus was teaching in parables and I just want you to make note here uh, from the 13th chapter of the book of Matthew uh, down at the 10th verse uh, the Bible says, And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And verse 11, He answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not uh, been given. And so parables tend to have a broad range uh, of meanings, but it's important to understand that that uh, parables were will either do a couple things. Uh, uh, it will cause you uh, or create a deeper awareness and uh, sort of cause you to seek a deeper understanding of what Jesus meant in terms of uh, the parables that he spoke. Uh, and then the other thing, if 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 you don't have a right relationship with Jesus Christ uh, the parable is somewhat concealed from you its meaning and so we want to make sure that we understand uh, as we look at our text today uh, Jesus is talking to his disciples uh, he has been teaching uh, quite extensively on parables and, and these are things that they should know and there are, these are things that uh, we as disciples of, of Jesus Christ we should know uh, but we want to get into the first outline taking from taken from Matthew chapter 18 uh, verses 21 and 22 the Bible says this is uh, from the King James Version uh, then came Peter to him and said Lord how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times uh, Jesus said unto him I say not unto thee until seven times but until seventy times seven so Peter's question uh, about this uh, in verse 21 came in response to Jesus teaching uh, about what to do uh, when a Christian sins against another Christian so uh, it's not a surprise that Peter asked the question but uh, we want to be able to note in the few verses uh, we read how Jesus taught uh, his disciples the most reasonable process of restoring a uh, offending believer but what is more amazing is that Jesus guidelines still uh, work today there is some um, uh, sort of some uh, teachings here if you will uh, about uh, where Peter got this seven times uh, of forgiveness but we shouldn't be hard on Peter for stating the number seven as a number of times a person should be forgiven uh, although forgiving a fellow Jew was part of the Jewish DNA uh, but there were limits uh, in Jewish tradition uh, the number was three based upon uh, Amos uh, uh, prophecy in the book of Amos chapter 1 uh, verses 3 verse 6 uh, verse 9 uh, 
uh, verse 11 and verse 13, and also Amos chapter 2, verse 1, verse 4, and um, verse 6. So, uh, whether we are using a different translation, um, and the 70 times uh, a 7 is there, or you may see uh, something else, but 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 we want to be able to note that people should not count the number of times they forgive. So Peter, like every other believer, should be willing to do so uh, no matter how many times it was needed. So Jesus was setting a new standard. Uh, the point in verse 22 is that we should not be trying to count how many times to forgive. We should always forgive and because we have been forgiven. And that is the very basic uh, basis of our understanding of why we should do it. Uh, and, and we're speaking directly to followers of Jesus Christ, individuals who have accepted him as Lord and Savior. Uh, the very basis of our salvation is that we have been forgiven of all of our sins, what we did in the past and what we have done even present day and then those sins that we may commit in the future. Uh, we should be uh, thoroughly thankful to God for wiping uh, the debt, uh, the slate clean, clearing the debt through uh, the blood and the body of Jesus Christ that you and I could go free. And so when we do things to one another uh, that we shouldn't do, we ought to learn how to uh, atone for that, to apologize for that, and to and to forgive one another. Uh, you know, you this is a very powerful lesson, and though we may understand uh, uh, what it means, uh, what this parable means, but we can see the need for this in our culture today. Uh, we have uh, one of the highest uh, uh, killing rates uh, in our state, in our city. Uh, uh, we have multiple uh, uh, issues going on in our culture today so this standard is very well needed uh, in our culture today and perhaps if we would do what the Lord tells us to do uh, that we would forgive one another and learn how to forgive then perhaps we could do something about all of the senseless uh, killing and, and, and things that we see going on in our culture today we are so callous toward one another even in the house of the Lord our attitudes to one another uh, sometimes can be be very callous and we're not willing uh, and we're not able to let it go and I and I know uh, uh, perhaps you may say well Reverend I don't uh, uh, what someone did was really hard uh, for me to get over and that happens but what you should always realize is that you and I have the Holy Ghost and you and I have the capacity to call on the name of the Lord and God will give us power uh, to get over those hurdles of, of, of wrongs that have been committed to us whereby we don't see it as possible that we can get past it. But the Gospel of Luke, uh, the Spirit of the Lord was just reminding me of Luke 1, chapter 1, verse 37 uh, and the Bible says that for, uh, uh, Jesus says, for nothing will be impossible with God. Nothing is impossible. So we want to be able to keep that in mind. So the question is asked here in the quarterly, considering your personal experiences with either giving or receiving forgiveness, what feelings uh, were involved? And I, I was thinking about that and uh, uh, looking in the mirror at my own life and and how liberated I, I, I feel and that I felt when the Lord set me free. Uh, sin is such a binding uh, a factor. It is such a weight, a heavy weight. Uh, and so through Jesus Christ, God lifted that weight. And, and all of us can experience or have experienced uh, paying off a debt or, or, or having someone pay off a debt. And, and just the feeling of not having that over your head and hanging over your head and that burden on your shoulders uh, has been lifted. And so we should, as Christians, never ever forget the blessing of forgiveness. And we're going to look at that uh, prayerfully over in Psalm 32. I, I just want to 
take a quick look at that as we go into this lesson. Uh, but our second outline is entitled, What Heaven is Like? This is taken from Matthew chapter 18, uh, verses 23 through 27. And from the NIV translation, the Bible says, Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold uh, to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. Verse 27, the servant's master took pity on him. If you're writing or reading this in your Bible, I want you to underline verse 27, uh, where it says the servant's master took pity on him. Uh, we'll talk about that on the other side. Uh, Cancel the debt and let him go. But here, Peter's uh, question, uh, Jesus shared the parable of the, of the unforgiving servant. He began by stating that this parable would give a glimpse of how God's kingdom principles operate. This is very important for us to understand as saved individuals. Uh, we should be operating under a new set of bylaws, if you will. Uh, we should be following new guidelines uh, as people of God. These would have been and are given to us uh, to understand of how the kingdom of God, God's rule, God's reign, how it operates. And so in the parable, the king represented God and the debt represented sin. Let us keep in mind that the proposed initial action of the king reflected God's judgment while the king's response to the servant's plea for mercy reflects God's grace. So uh, all of us can uh, remember the day, uh, uh, if you will, of when we have had to cry out to the Lord to have pity or to have mercy upon us uh, according to his loving kindness. And he did that. Uh, God did without any misgivings. He forgave us uh, uh, our sins. And uh, the first epistle of John chapter 1 uh, says he's able to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we have experienced uh, uh, God's favor, God's grace. He didn't give us what we deserved. Uh, he didn't give us uh, the just due for the uh, of penalty of our sins that we committed by if God had had given us the, the paycheck for our sins you and I would not be here today there was no way uh, you and I could have a relationship with Jesus Christ or with God had it not been for Jesus Christ and his atoning sacrifice you and I were brought back into a right standing a right relationship with God only because of, of God's grace uh, 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 through Jesus Christ at Calvary only because that precious blood that was shed on Calvary uh, 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 paid that debt uh, uh, for our sins a debt that we could not pay but for whatever reason the king had chosen this time to settle his servants debts uh, we are not told uh, if it were an annual event or a first time activity but based upon how much the servant owed, uh, it must have been the first time. So 10,000 bags of gold, according to the NIV translations, were a small fortune uh, during the time of Jesus' earthly ministry. Uh, we are not told how the servant amassed so much debt, but uh, Jesus could have been using hyperbole to emphasize the impossibility uh, of the servant to repay uh, the debt. It goes on to talk about uh, he begged. Uh, this servant begged the king for leniency. Uh, and so uh, God has been very good to us. He has been so kind uh, to us and he has done what no one else could do. So uh, this is what God has done for us. And so unlike human thinking, God looked beyond our sin debt and offered us a clean slate. Isn't that beautiful to know 
that what all of the things are uh, 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 not just the deeds but our nature uh, was so sinful we were not even worthy uh, 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 nor could we have the fellowship that God wanted to have uh, with us but thank God for Jesus uh, thank God for Jesus if you look at Romans chapter 6 and I believe at the 10th verse it will tell you how uh, what kind of death that Jesus died and the Bible says he died that death to sin all of the sin that you and I and all of humanity uh, committed God placed it on his son and and so uh, uh, Jesus uh, paid that price uh, Philippians chapter 2 is an excellent book to study uh, to look at how Jesus humbled himself uh, even to the point of death and death on the cross but the question is asked here in the quarterly why do some people feel that justice is not served when the offending party is forgiven rather than punished that's a very interesting point and sometimes uh, the wrongs that have been done uh, they are worthy of, of uh, 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 due punishment if you will but but forgiving and being forgiven is is such a powerful tool uh, 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 it, it is such a powerful mechanism whereby uh, you are not incarcerated and you are not in bondage for holding anything against me and then I'm not in bondage of what I have done because uh, God has blessed you with a spirit and an attitude to let me go free and so we need this kind of instruction in the church we need it in our land today we are desperately needing to learn how to let it go uh, we are in desperate need of learning how to forgive to love one another uh, I don't want to know what would have happened to me if God had not forgiven me of my sins I don't know I would not want to see where I would have ended up if God had not forgiven me and I hope you see where I'm going with this and if you can't understand this text and maybe you have been offended very deeply ask God to bless your understanding and to give you a heart of compassion uh, a, a servant's heart if you will and always remember you have a past and you have a history that God uh, did not pay you uh, what you should have been paid and so just think about it in these terms and, and we'll be able to uh, to get over the hump if you will but but I, I want to remind us that every day let, let, let's just do it this way every morning that God wakes you up this is biblical he wakes us up with new mercy and new grace have you ever thought about that uh, 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 the, the the grace of God is 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 so profound we we can't even put it into terms but every day however uh, old you might be count those days how many times God woke you up with new mercy and new grace he didn't take you in your sin he didn't take you in your sleep but he gave you another day and he gave you another day and then he gave you another day and more time he gave you another day God has just been it's just it's, it's, it's hard to put into words how good God has been and this is the very basic uh, understanding that we as believers we must have God is commanding us to forgive one another the expectations or, and the bar is high for us to forgive so we want to be able to understand this and appreciate what we have what God has already done and then our last outline is entitled the wicked servant and again I want to read this from the NIV translation but when that servant went out he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins he grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, 
be patient with me, and I will pay it back. Verse 30, But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. And when the other servants saw what had happened, uh, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Uh, verse 32, Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. Verse 35, this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. I, this is Jesus talking. I want you to understand that today. This is Jesus talking. Uh, this is Jesus giving instructions to his disciples. This is Jesus providing a path of understanding for his disciples. This is Jesus removing all of the excuses that we may have of saying, I didn't know. This is Jesus giving us direct teaching that has come from his Father to give to his disciples. This is Jesus setting the standard, the expectation for life and relationships from the time he said it to his disciples to the future, to the time that uh, he would leave them uh, on their own. So we have a lot of uh, base information here of the expectations of, uh, uh, of God through Jesus Christ on his disciples. And so think of it in these terms. If we don't have any mercy and compassion and forgiveness for others, how do we expect and why do we expect God to forgive us when we don't show the capacity to forgive others? So we, we, we box ourselves in in terms of the standard that we desire God to set for us. So if we don't show as this servant had been forgiven of all that he owed and no sooner in, even in this parable that he was liberated from what he owed, he had an, he had an opportunity to forgive uh, 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 someone in his circle. But he began to choke this individual. He began to place heavy burdens uh, 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 on this individual who he knew was not able to pay. And so the onlooker saw it and went back and reported this story uh, 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 to the master who became uh, angry and brought this servant in who had been forgiven and questioned him. You know, I... I, I want us to understand something. The Spirit of the Lord has just reminded me of the Exodus. You might recall uh, during Moses' time and, and all of the prayers that, uh, that Israel had mounted up to God. 400 years of prayers of, of calling on the name of the Lord. And let me say this. When we do things, when we do things to people or we treat them a certain way that is not uh, in line with God's justice. Don't you know we make or cause people to pray? And we cause them to call out on the name of the Lord and God comes and, and vindicates. God comes and, and hears and answers prayer. And so we should be reminded here in this parable, this parable of the power of, of prayer. Uh, uh, that, that, that God hears and answers prayer. And so uh, I, I just want to make sure that we have this uh, uh, in our arsenal going forward uh, in our relationships is that God is expecting us to forgive one another. God is expecting us to love one another. God is expecting us to do for others as he has already done and continues to do 
for us. We can never ever forget that. But the question is asked here, what are your thoughts about the following statement? A believer who declares bankruptcy and is thus forgiven of, of perhaps thousands of dollars of debt has no right to demand re repayment by anyone who borrows from him or her. So we could go back and forth with this, but we have the biblical account that we have been forgiven. Uh, and we have to learn how to let it go uh, as believers. Uh, it doesn't mean we minimize the wrong. It doesn't mean we overlook the sin. Uh, we do have to address those things. But our relationships and the power of forgiveness in those relationships is key. Uh, is key for you. And it is key for me. But I want to take a look very quickly over in Psalm 32 as I shared earlier that we would do because this is a very powerful psalm. Um, it is a psalm of David, a, a contemplation, if you will. Psalm 32, beginning at verse 1. The Bible says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit this blessing has nothing to do with a house or a car or money in the bank or a good job or any other tangible thing this blessing uh, is about a position that you and I as believers have been brought into through the blood of Jesus Christ. This position is an act of God's grace that he didn't count. He didn't credit you with what he should have credited you with in terms of your sin. He didn't count it. Uh, this transgression, again, a violation of law, command, or duty, uh, but in verse 2 it talks about uh, impute iniquity well what is that that is gross injustice uh, and then it goes on to talk about in, in whose spirit there is no deceit no dishonest behavior uh, meant to, to fool or to, to trick someone and so all of these things that we used to do that God has forgiven us for and now we are calling ourselves blessed because of the grace of God so we have a foundation whereby we can always look and see what the Lord has done for us and thus be able to do for someone else and so I challenge you today I challenge all of us today um, if you want to grow up in Christ we must learn how to forgive. Uh, if we're going to, to move ahead, don't you know you cannot go forward with all of that burden on your shoulders of unforgiveness in your heart. It is such a binding factor. And why would you want to keep yourself imprisoned like that just because you won't let someone else go free? You are doing damage to yourself as well as to the individual that you won't forgive. Always remember that. Uh, it's not uh, so much on them and they, they get all the bad stuff and you get away. No, you are hurting yourself. I want you to remember that. But our closing prayer offered in our quarterly is forgiving God. We thank you for forgiving our sins. We rejoice that you have accepted our confession of our sins in your son's name. Glory to your name, for his blood has washed away sin's crimson stain. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we hope, trust, and pray that we've given you some food for thought. We really need to add this uh, passage of scripture 
to our culture. We need to add it to our congregation. We need it to we need to add it to our families. We need to add it to our congregation. We need to add it to our communities. We need to add it worldwide so every man will have something to contribute to his fellow man, which is the power of forgiveness. So until such time that the law will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.